Hello everyone and welcome back to DCS World and in this video we have my first experience in a North American F-86. So I'm going to do the cold start tutorial and the takeoff tutorial, though of course with the takeoff tutorial I'll attempt to land it. But uh, the F-86 I decided to get because, well, it's a nice historical plane fought in the Korean War of course against MiG-15s. I had to decide between the F-86 and MiG-15s and what tilted me to the F-86 is I also have the Nellis Air Force Base map and also because astronauts actually flew in the F-86 I decided that it'd be nice to have it alongside my F-5 which is sort of like a T-38 which is what astronauts use to train in. But yeah there's some history with the F-86 so I decided to try it out uh, and got it on sale during the steam summer sale. But here we go with the cold start tutorial. As with the F-5, the first thing we have to do is call the ground crew to get the ground power connected up and then we can start the plane. It doesn't have an APU, it doesn't uh, have its own little diesel generator in the tail or anything like that, so we, we have to get Copy. the ground power there. And that's what they were copying and they'll confirm. Ground power is now on. And everything during these tutorials have sort of a weird delay and a little bit of a gap, but now we have to flick the master switch and that's there. At least they helpfully highlight it. And one thing you notice about the cockpit right away is it's all dials. It's all analog, if you will. And I like that too. Uh, I suspect that the MiG-15 is probably more popular. But, well, anyway, uh, we'll uh, come into contact with MiG-15s in a further campaign should I get far enough with this. I do have the campaign that involves the F-86 fighting against the MiG-15s, so we'll see if I actually make it to that. Um, Alright, so I'm having a little bit of fun with the throttle there, and I eventually have to press home because I can't figure out how to actually manipulate it using the mouse. Uh, you, you know, there's a clickable cockpit, but I couldn't quite uh, toggle the uh, throttle into the right position right there, so home is the key for that otherwise. It actually says that you should press home only after you get to 3% on the thrust, but um, it seemed to work better if you pressed home first, then click the starter switch. And But uh, that makes sense because what the first press of home does is it starts the fuel flowing to the engine, and it's only after that that you want to start the engine. Okay, but things are looking up here. It looks like we've actually started it. Very easy to start up. This is not an airliner. Uh, so, and it needs to be able to get off the ground quickly, and it sure looks like that's possible. We're just waiting for the correct indications on the dials. And then we have to reset the hydraulic system. That's that ominous looking switch right there, uh, framed in red, but it's actually not that bad. So toggle the hydraulic system, and then we're ready. So now just setting the flaps and verifying the flaps are in the correct position with the outside view. And then disconnecting the power. Off the ground power. Copy. Okay, and waiting for it to be disconnected. Ground power is now off. So checking flaps and all, we see flaps are lowered and I'm bringing in the speed brakes. And it's a very nice model from the outside, it looks great. I imagine it's the best F-86 model that you can get for a flight simulator. I haven't seen one that's better. Closing the canopy here, it uh, actually uh, can be closed halfway even, so make sure you close it all the way. And now it says that the tutorial is over, but I wanted to mess around with it. First of all, I, I just wanted to see how it handles, basically and what I can get away with. So here, just taxiing. I am gonna skip the taxiing tutorial. I'll just uh, derp my way through that, if you will. Well, the ground handling is gonna be one of the more exciting parts, I suppose. And there happened to be another F-86 rolling on by in front of me. And so I got in behind it. And it was probably going the correct speed to taxi at. But I eventually decided to go a little bit faster. And so you can see us closing. It's a nice interior. I, I, I personally like, you know, the place full of dials instead of the glass cockpit version of things. 
like all the stuff spinning all over the place. Feels organic in a weird way. So there's our uh, fellow F86 and I slide in in front of him. I'm not supposed to pass on the right but that's that's basically what I did and I paid for it. <laughs> So that was going a bit too fast. And now I know about the grass. The grass can get very, very sticky. So since I have momentum, I decided to push that momentum so that I would not get stuck on the grass. And that also was bad sort of scrape there. The question is, did that do damage? This is important information for, the fu for my future with this plane. Did that do damage? Well, we're about to find out. And I sort of skidded a little bit there, and now I'll try and right myself and take off. Seems like a good thing to do. I haven't taken the takeoff tutorial yet, but I, I get a feeling I can at least get it off the ground as long as the landing gear doesn't buckle under me. And here we go. Quite a glare from the sun on some of the instruments. Okay, and we're off the ground. It's a uh, sort of twitchy plane, I mean, as you might expect from a fighter plane. And as it turns out, I did bust the gear. The doors don't seem to be closing because I guess the nose wheel is busted and it won't go in. And this is good, I mean, if you uh, do stuff like I did, if you mess around with it and end up getting a scrape on the taxiing. It should do something to you like this and I think uh, I like this. This is a positive aspect of this particular model. I look forward to damaging it in uh, very interesting ways in the future. It did seem like getting the rest of the landing gear out was possible but I actually uh, Right at this pull up, I basically lose control. So, right there, I, I basically can't get control of it now. Uh, well, of course, I was on the outside view and not paying attention to my instruments and explosions. Alright, but we move on to the takeoff tutorial. And hopefully, we can fly it properly now. Welcome to the practical takeoff exercise in the F 86 fighter. I have Before a lesson, vague view of how it handles. And I also wanted to change the trim. I like to have the elevator trim and aileron trim on my hat switch on the joystick. And by default, it's actually the hat switch is parented to the, the view. Procedure I don't need the hat switch uh, However, manipulating the view. I just use the mouse for that. And requires high concentration and attention to prevent potentially dangerous situations. The key elements of the takeoff are increasing engine RPM to takeoff mode while holding the brakes or the W key. Releasing the brakes and maintaining the aircraft in a straight line by precise use of the pedals. And with the nose wheel steering button held down at up to 50 knots and at higher speeds with the pedals only. The nose wheel can be lifted off the ground to assume takeoff position at approximately 100 knots. Takeoff position is shown in the briefing. Depending on weight, the aircraft will lift off at 115 to 140 knots. Maintaining special position during acceleration and climb. And retraction of the gear and flaps. Okay, right so now, make sure that's that what we want to see. Extended by looking at the wings from the cockpit or using an outside view with F2. Outside to view and cockpit, inside the cockpit you can F1. see it too. Yep. Press space button. Hold the brakes by pressing the W key. Then set maximum RPM by moving the throttle handle all okay, the way to or numpad plus. Under normal conditions, the brakes must hold the aircraft in place. The RPM reading on the tachometer is not less than 98% and is not more than 100%. And the, the tutorial goes through a number of different criteria to check before actually taking off. I skipped that in this. At approximately 50 knots indicated airspeed. 
Okay. Mm Are we ready to go then? Yep. Okay, so, I mean, just trying to keep it on the runway first with nose wheel steering and then with the rudder. After the nose wheel lifts off, maintain this position by returning the stick slightly forward and continue accelerating. When airborne and a positive rate of climb is established, retract the landing. I end up pulling up a lot further than I think uh, the tutorial was wanting me to. And eventually it says that we should climb at 300 knots, which seems really fast. Maintain that required pitch during the climb. Use the trimmer to reduce the manual force required to maintain that position. Nose down trim is right control and semi -clone. Nose up trim is right control and period. Yeah, I'm trying to get it trimmed out. Of course, during not using climb, those controls, but the hatch switch instead. Actually, you can see when I'm doing the elevator trim because you can see the hat switch on the in-game joystick ma being manipulated, and that'll give well you an indication done. when I'm doing that. Anyway, I decided to do a full traffic pattern sort of thing. You note these markings on the cockpit, those only make sense for a dive, and basically they're telling you what angle of a dive you're, you've got, uh, 30 degrees or more, which is interesting. I normally don't... I mean, I guess that's part of the dogfighting deal. This is not a dive bomber, so... Anyway, I actually got to almost 500 knots indicated airspeed and turned a little bit vigorously, so I almost had a little bit of red out when I pushed down on the stick a little bit. And so, just continuing on with this leg parallel to the runway. It was still a little bit twitchy and uh, took some getting used to, but you can see it sort of bounces a little bit. And I don't know if that's because of pilot induced oscillation kind of things, or uh, it seems pretty smooth here. But yeah, need more practice. I don't like this outside camera, which also sort of bounces and wiggles a lot. Um, I guess that's realistic, but. I don't need that from the camera. I feel it's just artificial. Anyway, we're approaching the runway and I get the speed brakes out. And time for the final turn towards it. Now, let's see if I can do this properly in my first landing attempt in an F-86 in any flight simulator. I don't think I've ever flown the F-86 in particular. So, this is uh, hopefully a very authentic way to start it. Alright, we're more or less lined up. I'm not entirely sure what the landing gear extension speed or flap extension speeds are. I haven't looked at the manual yet. Should have done that, but I trusted that 150 knots indicated was good enough and because I went into the outside view I only go to the outside view to verify the gear and flaps uh, because of Kerbal Space Program I swear um, otherwise I really should be just staying in the cockpit view and just uh, use lights and just glancing out the window at the flaps to check them anyway here we go there's runway and I'm very fast now I really can be going slower than this and I have to dump speed while hovering above the runway for a little bit you can see overshooting but the runway is generous in its length and I touch down safely and nothing seems to be getting damaged I mean at least at this point everything seems to be intact there are no horrible sounds nothing's on fire and DCS World, in my experience, does give you that kind of feedback when things go bust. So, I think it was alright. So, I proceeded a taxi, this time a little bit uh, more carefully than on the initial attempt. So basically, my first serious flight in the F-86 uh, turned out alright. The, the first technical takeoff with the F-86 was uh, not so alright, but 
That was that wasn't me being serious, I swear. So I park it in front of this and try and shut it down. They haven't actually told me how to shut it down properly. So I just extrapolate from what I did on the startup. And just just uh, do end twice, whereas on the startup I did home twice. And that cuts off fuel to the engine. And then after that I can switch off the battery and the main switch. So that's what I do. And I hope that's in the right order. I don't think I really toggled much else. So I figured that this was good enough. So there you have it. My first experience in the F86 Sabre. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.